the next uh, uh, the next session we have is a really interesting uh, take on a whole new different perspective around the, the future of work a company that has disrupted uh, the actual workplace so we'll have the ceo of uh, we work and we also have the board member of WeWork from SoftBank, um, Kritiga. So let me introduce you to both Kritiga and Sandeep and then um, hand it over to, the, to, to both of them. So Kritiga is an investment partner at uh, SoftBank Investment Advisors, a $100 billion uh, SoftBank Vision Fund. Uh, she specializes in enterprise, frontier, and uh, health tech investments. Prior to SoftBank, she was the first employee and managing director for Facebook India and served as chair of the Stanford uh, Stanford Business School, uh, GSB. Uh, she's also the board member, as I mentioned, at WeWork. Some fun fact, as we are talking more uh, personal stuff here as a part of this new normal, uh, Kritika's daughter and my daughter are friends for many years and in, in the same class at Harker. And uh, we just found out uh, a few weeks back. So that's an um, interesting fun fact. Um, and Kritika will be um, moderating and actually having a, a, a conversation uh, with Sandeep, who is the CEO of WeWork. He's also the board member, uh, and he brings to WeWork decades of experience in real estate industry, including uh, precious uh, previous roles at, as the CEO of Brookfield Properties Real Estate Group and CEO of GGP. Um, another fun fact of uh, about Sandeep uh, and, and just personal connections, uh, his his uh, son, uh, Sahir, is an amazing young man, uh, just graduated recently from Dartmouth, and uh, he's been uh, doing some really good innovation on the on the cryptocurrency where uh, he and I have been sharing a lot of good, uh, uh, good notes. And so Sandeep has uh, raised an amazing young man. So, you know, congratulations uh, for that. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kritiga to, to take it from here. Carl, thank you for that introduction. Very excited to be here at Taikon talking about the future of work with Sandeep Matrani, CEO of WeWork. Sandeep, welcome. And um, as we start this discussion, I was just reflecting that um, in my role serving on the board of WeWork, I've had many aha moments. And one of the aha moments, the biggest aha moments has always been about just the sheer breadth of companies that you serve. So as we start this discussion, would love for you to set that baseline. How should the audience be thinking about the WeWork workplace and the companies that you serve? You know, Kritika, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for being at Taikon. You know, I've actually, this is really a pleasure and honor. I've heard about it and been associated with her distance for so long. And to have the opportunity to be at, uh, to be speaking with you is, uh, is really an honor. Uh, you know, WeWork is a, an interesting company, right? It started off in the, after the Great Recession uh, in 2010. It started off to cater to, you know, entrepreneurial companies, uh, you know, early in its game. And over the evolution, uh, of, of the next uh, 10 years or the next decade, it started to catering, uh, you know, to both the small, medium businesses and enterprise clients. That was a big pivot uh, in 2017. And today about 54% of our clients is what you would call enterprise clients. Uh, you know, the likes in the financial industry of Citadel, 0.72 in technology, it's Netflix, Google, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, uh, and the list is long, uh, you know, in healthcare, Smirk, Organon, Johnson and Johnson, Novartis, uh, and in education, which we pivoted in the in the uh, uh, in the time of uh, 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 the, the, the 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 pandemic, uh, was Georgetown University, Columbia University, University of Arizona. So it's a wide breadth of enterprise clients, uh, and then of course it continues to be this SMBs. And the SMBs actually are two types. You know, uh, one is the entrepreneurs across the board. Uh, but, but we seem to attract, uh, you know, you know, I call the call it the new world technology companies for just because they haven't built the scale yet uh, of the larger ones, uh, whether it be the Klarna's, Quantos on the fintech uh, company side. And so, as 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 as, as our sponsor of of the SPAC, uh, uh, Vivek Ranadevi says, if you uh, 
you know, if you don't want to invest in WeWork, then you should invest in every company that wants to take space in WeWork. And so that seems to be, you know, in in, in reality, you know, what what the WeWork is known for. It's just got that entrepreneurial, uh, you know, spirit. It's got that collaboration, innovation. It builds a culture. It gives you that, you know, the, the feeling when you walk in here that I want to be an innovator. I want to be a creator. I want to be a starter of businesses and, 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 uh, and even companies like, you know, not companies, but like the Department of Defense, uh, you know, rent space from us. And why do they do that? Because for them to attract talent, uh, do you want to go work at the Pentagon or do you want to go work in a cool environment that replicates where their, where their, uh, you know, where their talent is going today? Uh, and so, so we, we, we have this knack of building a special place with a special community. Oh, that's awesome. And Sandeep, I'm actually at the Palo Alto WeWork location. And well, I've seen well. logos. <laughs> totally. And uh, I've seen logos of uh, some of the industries that you mentioned and uh, the community feel is uh, real, very real. So let's rewind to you about this time last year. You just joined as the CEO of WeWork. You came to lead a business turnaround. We had our first in-person board meeting, and then the global pandemic hit. As you think about the breadth of companies that uh, you just mentioned, what are some themes that you saw as how people were thinking about work, workplace, and what was the role that you and WeWork played in helping guide that strategy? You know, that has a lot to do with also why I joined the company. You know, when I joined the company, I knew it was a turnaround. Uh, I knew the elements of how to do a turnaround, but why pick WeWork, right? And, you know, there, there are other companies that, uh, that were out there. Um, and this being my, you know, third turnaround, uh, I was very focused on the fact that WeWork is a verb, right? It's synonymous with flexibility. Uh, and so the question is, does it resonate then and does it resonate now? Uh, you know, it, it sort of, you know, epitomizes, as I mentioned, you know, place where you can col do collaboration, innovation, build culture, do mentorship. Uh, it did that pre, does it do it now? Um, and, and the aspect here being, uh, it has a prop tech platform, right? Uh, which, uh, you know, allows you to actually digitize the world's largest asset class that has not been digitized, which is a $70 trillion marketplace in commercial real estate. Uh, and even if you can make a small dent uh, in, in that marketplace, uh, it would take it to a, a different uh, level. Um, and, uh, and so as we sort of, you know, look at what it was like pre-pandemic and during the pandemic and now hopefully at least in the US we're starting to see a post-pandemic world. Uh, I always tell people one thing, what we knew before changed during, what we knew during changed post. And I assure you a year from today, we will think of it differently. So all that put together, what we're hearing from clients is what we want is flexibility. We want the ability to come into collaboration hubs like we've done with Dialpad in the Bay Area in three, three collaboration hubs uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, we want to be able to bring people together for collaboration, innovation, culture, and mentorship, which is what we've been able to do. And during the pandemic, we were started the digitization process of our real estate by coming up with the all access card, which is a subscription model where you can go to any one of our 800 locations uh, you know, and, and if you, you know, it, it, so it's available to everyone 24 uh, seven. And, and, and it is a, you know, as, as we then joke and say a little bit, uh, you know, you can go to Starbucks and get office space for free, or you can come to WeWork and get coffee for free, right? So it's, but it's no longer, you know, a little bit of a jest and a joke. It really becomes much more of a reality, uh, especially in the pandemic when you've been cooped up uh, for 12 months. And so we're seeing this tremendous uh, benefit. And so COVID really has been a tailwind to our business because it, it has highlighted the aspect of flexibility. Flexibility used to be 3% of most people's portfolio. And if you speak to most CEOs, they'll tell you it's going to be 10 to 20% of their portfolio. It's no, you know, the beauty about today is like, you know, we talk about workplace of the future. Every CEO wants to be in the conversation <laughs> before, you know, the CEOs would say, ah, I really, 
give that to the real estate guy. I don't much care. Uh, and all of a sudden that dynamic has completely changed. And so, so we're pretty excited to be able to create this flexibility to be able to start to digitize the real estate. And it really resonates with small, medium businesses who are looking to come back in and enterprise clients who say, I really don't want to make a long-term commitment right now. A year, two-year commitment is good enough for me because I don't know what the future is going to look like. And I'm sure it's going to be different a year from today than it is today. So let's find out what, what, you know, where this world goes in the next 12 to 24 months before we make decisions that have long-lasting uh, repercussions in our future. Got it. Um, and Sandeep, it was great to hear that perspective of what your clients and companies are telling you. If we take it to the member level, the people who are using the space on an everyday uh, basis, uh, I know you recently did a study that um, looked at how and when people want to come back to work. Any key findings, anything that tells us about the future of work, Sandeep? Um, yeah, one thing, you know, is, is, is people do want that level of uh, flexibility. They do want, you know, I use that word hybrid, uh, you know, uh, but the hybrid doesn't necessarily mean working from home uh, is what we, what we determine, is that people are willing, you know, to give up a perk. 75% of the people are willing to give up some sort of a perk, you know, less time off, uh, you, know, you know, some difference in health insurance in some way so that they can have the opportunity to work a day or two close to home. Uh, and, and again, I say close to home because, well, you know, 64% of the people said, look, we're willing to pay our, from our own pocket. Okay, if you can allow us to find a place close to our office so that we can go to. Now, that's sort of very, you know, again, very telling for our business um, because even you can have large corporations uh, who are willing to basically have their employees work remotely and they want to go outside the house, but they want to be close to their house. I was talking to a very senior banker, head of real estate of uh, one of the top three banks in the country, and he lives in Westchester. And he made a point. He said, you know, a day a week, I wouldn't mind going to my branch office, you know, we, uh, you know, a, a bank branch to go work versus coming into New York City. He did not say, I want to work from my home. Uh, and that's sort of a very interesting shift. Now, people work from their home because they don't have the option to go uh, you know, to a place close to their home. Uh, so, so it's very interesting that people are willing to do something to get something. Um, it, you know, it's fascinating to me. The other thing what we found fascinating is you have three different categories of people. If people are highly engaged and love what they do, they really want to come to work. Okay, if the people are partially engaged, they sometimes want to come to work. And if the people are completely not engaged, okay, they opt to work from home. So it goes back to the theory, do you love what you do or you don't love what you do? And I found that to be resonating with people long to come in if, you, if you're an engaged employee and if you're a completely not engaged employee, you're just biding your time. You really don't want to come to work. So and the, 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 the findings were, were very interesting to us. Uh, um, and, uh, but they had a theme. The theme was that if you're an engaged employee, uh, you know, you, you want to leave your home. Doesn't mean you need to come to your, your traditional headquarter office every day. So, uh, Sandeep, as someone who's very engaged um, to my work, I think the key that I am taking away certainly is that flexibility um, in that in wanting to come to work, but also having that option of being close uh, to home. Um, and as we, as we think of that feedback then of uh, what people are saying about how and when they want to work, what are you seeing companies doing to respond to that need? It's, a, it's fascinating, right? I mean, to me, uh, I always go back and you know, try to think about my conversation nine months ago or six months ago, or three months ago, and it has been an evolution. And when we started this conversation, you know, I would sort of sit back last summer, early fall, it was all about uh, a reduction of office space. Uh, 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 you know, there'll be much more hybrid working. Uh, is there a need for an office? What's the need for an office? And that slowly transitioned into, we need an office. Uh, now, we may ask people to come in, you know, three days a week or four days a week, uh, but we need an office. Uh, we need that for collaboration, innovation. I mean, we're repetitive uh, for, you know, for what we need it for. 
And if you actually look at, you know, there were two articles in the Wall Street Journal, I think one Friday, one Saturday. Uh, the one on Friday talked about how the larger, you know, technology companies are being a lot more flexible uh, in their, you know, come back to work strategy, even though they are, you know, insisting that people come back three days a week, uh, but, but they are being a lot more flexible and that's because of fear of losing talent or uh, they want to give people more flex flexibility uh, on one hand. And on the second hand, they're growing their footprint, their real estate footprint, right? And the article talked about how Microsoft uh, is just building a brand new campus in Atlanta and Apple just announced building a brand new campus uh, in the Raleigh-Durham market. Uh, Facebook just took a whole bunch of space in New York City. Um, and so... So the aspect is obviously they're doing that because they do realize that their, their, their workforce is gonna to continue to expand and the office is at the heart, but they are providing their flexibility. The new world tech companies, I think this article was on Saturday, sit back and say very clearly, we're new, we're a startup, we need to come together. We cannot create this stuff sitting in our, you know, in our pajamas, in our, in our bedrooms, okay? And those companies are actually having their employees or their colleagues come in five days a week. Um, so, so the one thing, you know, you know, you can sort of sit back and say, uh, you know, the, the office is not dead. Maybe the way of working, okay, in an office has changed. Uh, and that's become a very common theme. And today, I, I have a call today at six o'clock with another fintech company based in San Francisco. And when we spoke to the CEO two weeks ago, he said, oh, we're not coming back to work till January next, uh, January 1 next year. And the call today at 6 p.m. is, hey, by the way, I got to open my New York office on June 1. Uh, I don't know where to go. Because that's why I'm calling you back because WeWork's the only place I can stand up an office in 30 days or less, right? And so it's a fascinating concept that the evolution has changed as vaccinations have accelerated, so has the, the future of what people want to do from a coming back to work perspective has changed dramatically. Sandeep, as you talk about the evolution, it makes me reflect on the evolution that we saw with the Emerge Accelerator program that we did together. This was a SoftBank Vision Fund WeWork Labs initiative. Uh, it's an eight-week accelerator program for brilliant companies founded by underrepresented founders for those in the audience who do not know about this program, Emerge. And Sandeep, if you remember, when we started talking about this program, it was supposed to be, this was a year ago, it was in office in, uh, in a WeWork space uh, in Silicon Valley. When the pandemic hit, we had to pivot to an online only format. Of course, there were many great things that we did in terms of the online format, including more global content was one of them. But then fast forward now, as we're looking to launch the UK program, it is going to be centered in the WeWork space um, in the UK and applications will be opening for that in a few weeks. So um, you know, the office is not dead and office being at the heart of uh, that collaboration uh, rings very true. Um, of course, we are talking about um, the strategy of different companies and you're given us several examples of uh, people calling you and saying, you know, how can I move in by uh, June 1st? Any broad themes there, Sandeep, um, as you look at people returning to work? Yeah, so I would sit back and say, you know, when I look at, you know, December, January, February, March, uh, the small medium businesses actually came back uh, to work much faster. The demand from them is a lot more. Lot more. Uh, and I think, I mean, again, when you speak to them and say, why? They said, look, we've got to put food on our table, okay? Uh, it's very hard for us to run a business uh, sitting um, in, in uh, you know, at home. And so uh, those small, medium businesses have rebounded back fast. They've understood the purpose of, you know, you can't exist, to, you, know, uh, you know, without collaborating and innovating and mentorship and, you know, uh, you know, being away. And again, that was very well said again by the Saturday article in the Wall Street Journal. And so, so effectively, the small medium businesses have rebounded dramatically. And it's really, it's actually great to see because at the heart of this company, you know, you just talked about the Emerge program is really the entrepreneurs. Albeit we've, uh, our enterprise business has grown, 
but you know, our SMB business is still very, very strong and very important, actually very important to, to this company and that entrepreneurs and small businesses are coming back in droves. Uh, and they don't have the technology to work from home. They don't have the capabilities to do that. Um, and, and so the larger corporations who, who have that sort of, you know, stuff in the cloud and they can, you know, do things in a different way. Uh, even they have actually sort of, you know, said, they, you know, today I was reading an article that, you know, productivity is down, collaboration is down, innovation is down. And, and look, uh, in, in the tech world, and I'm not going to give names, uh, but there were two companies who tried this a decade ago uh, and both reversed plans because uh, it didn't work. And so the logic is, hey, but today we have better technology and therefore we can do that. And I sort of say, what is the better technology? We have Zoom, uh, uh, we have the cloud, uh, you know, how does that take away from anything else? Uh, and so uh, I, I think, look, I think the one thing we know is this uncertainty. The uncertainty is really good for WeWork because it allows people not to make long-term decisions. Um, but but we, one, one thing we do know, I, I would do believe there'll be much more reversion to the mean uh, over time. Um, but uh, but it's, uh, it, it's going to be very interesting to see. You spoke a little bit there about technology and technology trends, and this is Tycon, so let's spend a few minutes actually talking about technology and how it applies to digitization of the largest asset class in the world, real estate. Um, tell us about the technology journey pre-COVID, during COVID, if and how you saw the acceleration of digitization that was witnessed across industries in your space. Yeah, so fascinating. As I was telling today, we did a uh, we did a uh, open doors with a uh, you know, few hundred of our we were colleagues, and I said the one thing I've learned uh, the older I've gotten is to have an open mind. So when I joined a year ago, I said this is a real estate play. I'm going to get it to be profitable as space as a service, and 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 that would be the uh, the uh, that would be the uh, that would be victory. Uh, and thank God I didn't shut off the mind uh, to really what this company had built and spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars was to build this amazing prop tech platform to service our 800 plus locations. Uh, and and you know things like people talk about today: how do I go and book a desk? How do I book an office? How do I book a conference room within my own space? No one does that. We, we've been doing it for a long time. And that was the heart of our business. Uh, and all of a sudden, there's a value proposition because you could do that. And knowing that we could do that, we said, okay, we can digitize our real estate. Uh, you know, and most people will, you know, who, who have multiple offices will tell you, you know, you can't get access to your offices with the same card. We can get access to 800 locations with the same card. We said, we were, we, were, we, were, we were forward thinkers there because we thought about it in a funny way. How do you access these things? You know, digitally, it may have been a physical card, which is now being put onto a, you know, onto a phone. Uh, but, you know, you still had that ability to do that because we had bought that technology early in the game. And so that allowed us to start digitizing our real estate because we were able to give people an all access card, which means you can access eight, any one of our 800 locations. You can book a desk, you can book a conference, you can book an office. Uh, we didn't have to invent it, we had it. Uh, uh, we just didn't market it. Uh, and, and so that started the digitization process. And then that took us to the next level and said, you know something, we have this really unique platform uh, and, 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 you know, we're able to create a top of the funnel. We can create all the membership agreements. We can do all our billing. We can do all our accounts receivable. Pay, I mean, everything end to end solution completely, you know, uh, on, on, uh, on a digital manner. Right. So, so we said, okay. And we also know that one thing for sure during, during COVID flexibility is on the rise. Pre COVID people thought the market would go from 13% to about 15%. Post COVID, the thing is going from 13% to 30% between now and 2030. It doesn't matter. These are big shifts. Uh, and so every you know, landlord or uh, is gonna have to come up with flexible space within their complexes, if you will. And how do they power those, 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 those flexible spaces? And we have the technology to do it, right? So we can white label it uh, to any landlord's name. There are 5,000 uh, lookalikes, uh, we work lookalikes in America alone, okay, who are all operating on Excel spreadsheets. Uh, 
and we're able to then provide, you know, we could provide them our platform as well. So, you know, COVID, you know, uh, opened, you know, my eyes on the real wealth this company has and how can we take advantage of that? So all of a sudden, to me, there is a path to digitization, uh, you know, so, so, you know, and I sort of equate this to Amazon, you know, I, I would love to be anything like Amazon, but it is you learn from the, the the best in the world, right? So, you know, Jeff Bezos, you know, did a DTC business, a direct to consumer business, uh, and then he built a platform to service his DTC business, and then he built a third party platform business or his marketplace business, right? So it's it's very similar, right? You know, we built a space and service business, built a prop tech platform to service that business, and now can we create that third party platform? Uh, so I'm, and I'm really excited that, you know, that there is a path to creating uh, prop tech for the, for the larger users of space. So the digitization um, and technology is such an incredible enabler um, and uh, it's fascinating to see it being applied to uh, the real estate space. I know we're going to rapidly run out of time, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask you um, please, my last question for today, which is on the leadership side, in the audience, you have CEOs and leaders from all kinds of businesses, small, medium, large. What have you found th that was hard over the pandemic that you know, shaped how you think about the future? Any thoughts for uh, leaders who are helping guide uh, their employees and people through the pandemic? I, I would say that, you know, when you are, uh, you're working from home, there's a sense of loneliness. There's a lack of connection. Uh, and so uh, I think when you know, we, we over communicated, we could have continued doing more. I think people want to hear uh, the voice uh, of the leadership. Uh, we were not afraid to pivot. Uh, and I think those who uh, took the pivot um, actually found themselves in a better position today versus those who sort of sat back and said, my industry will just be back. Uh, and so, uh, which I'm certain is true in some cases, but in you know a lot of cases you need to figure out how to pivot. So don't be afraid to pivot. Uh, and, and, I, and I think, you know, you have to believe uh, in the resilience of your teams uh, and, and so it's trust. So over communicate, don't be afraid to pivot. And, and, and trust your colleagues. Um, and, and, and that actually is a big mind shift, right? I mean, in many ways, people want to see people around the office because uh, as I was telling someone today, and you, you talk to people and you say, why do you want to work from home? And they're very honest. They'll tell you, look, I'm getting a Wayfair delivery, okay? I'm getting an Amazon delivery uh, and, uh, and I want to be home to collect the delivery. I have no one to be home to take the delivery. Even though I'm working 90% of the day at home, I have to take a paid time off day because I'm not in the office, right? Uh, and now all of a sudden we've legitimized it and said, if you need to do that, you can stay at home and work from home and not take paid time off. That's the big difference that's happened um, you know, during, during the pandemic. And, 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 and I think the organizations are appreciating the hardships uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of their colleagues uh, and are willing to accommodate those hardships uh, in, 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 in a manner that that's a win-win situation. So, I, I, so I'm, a, I'm a big believer today that, you know, effectively, you know, communication and transparency with the rank and file makes them feel included in the, in the, in the decisions of the leadership. Sunny, thank you for those leadership lessons and uh, thank you for that glimpse into the future of work. We are going to close with a very quick rapid fire round. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Don't think, just answer. Uh, one, what's been one thing that you've picked up during the pandemic? The importance of work-life balance. <laughs> oh, lots to unpack there, having... lots to unpack. Uh, who's your favorite dinner guest? My son, 23-year-old kid who's smarter than me. All right. Um, uh, on the beach with your son, on a hike with your son? Oh, for him, on a hike. For me, on the beach. He's the mountain. I'm the beach boy. <laughs> Ironic. Um, what's your favorite guilty pleasure? 
Uh, ice cream. Ooh, which flavor? Butter pecan with chocolate. All right. chocolate. Uh, I'm going to ask on my last rapid fire question. This is like picking among children. Which WeWork location is your favorite? You called it. All my children are the same. <laughs> All right. With that, thank you, Sandeep. Um, thanks, and thank you, God, for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Daikon, for having us uh, on your on your on your show. I want to thank Sandeep and Kurtiga for a great discussion. They gave us some really tremendous insights for how we can become more skilled at adapting in a world of seismic change. I'm Gary